everybody, welcome along to the channel. This is Nigel from Nigel's Modeling Bench and this is part 11 of the C141B Starlifter build. And if you haven't seen the other parts of this, go back, take a look, particularly if you're a newbie. Um, there's a lot of hints and tips in there for the newer modelers amongst us. Um, it's gone on a bit longer than I thought it would this one because the actual getting it finished and the filling and the blending and everything has, has been an absolute nightmare as, as uh, you'll know if you've been watching me. Um, so as you can see now, all the grey paintwork is done and we are all ready to, uh, to get a gloss coat on there now. And again, I still haven't fitted the engines and there's a reason for that is I don't want to actually end up with dry areas of paint in there. So I'm actually going to gloss coat everything, put it all together or even matte coat everything and then put it all together at the end because I've got a feeling these engines are just going to go in there and stay on their own. Um, one of my good followers, um, Vasily, commented about fitting the engines with magnets. A bit late for that really now. If I was going to do that, I should have put some magnets in the wing before I put the wing together. So quite often with magnets, it's, you know, once the assembly's done, it's too late. So we've got this grey paint on now. And as we know, um, some will argue, but I, I never take the chance. We've got to put a lot of decals on here. We can see here's the... Here's all the decals down the sides and then we've got some under the wings, we've got a couple on top of the wings and we've also got all these walkways and stencils and bits and pieces to go on. So I'm just going to give the whole thing pretty much, the whole upper surfaces, all down the sides of the fuselage and under the wings, a coat of gloss. Now, because this is Tamiya paint, it always has a kind of slightly sort of grainy finish. Now even though I thinned this and it was like 70% thinners, 30% paint with Mr. Color Lemony Thinners, it's still got that, you can hear it. So you don't want to go rubbing it down because you don't want to rub through your paint. So what I do is I use a piece of cotton, um, cotton, a piece of uh, paper towel and just literally use that like a sandpaper and it's almost like you're going to give it a polish. If you imagine, you know, you've, you've given it a coat of wax and now you're going to rub all the wax off. That's what you're going to do. And what that does is it takes off the, the roughness. You can see it's removing a very tiny amount of paint. But all it's doing, it's kind of denibbing it. And denibbing is a process that's used in the auto body industry a lot. It's um, basically, it's, it's when the paint goes down, it will be a flat surface and it will have bits and pieces and, and like stick it up. Denibbing it's just leveling it all back and getting it all flat again. And it basically is getting rid of that rough finish that's what you're doing because the thing is if you if you put a gloss coat over a rough finish it will dry to a rough finish but just shiny um, unless of course you're using two pack and then what two pack chen tends to do it's like a resin it dries from the outside in there we go it doesn't take much you don't have to go mad with it just gently rub it over rub over the whole thing and there we go that keep it in that lamp God knows I'm going to manage with this bigger aircraft I want to do. So there we are. And I'm going to get into these tight corners. Like so. And there we go. So that's the whole thing now rubbed over in just a couple of minutes flat as you saw. And basically that is good enough now. For a gloss coat and you can see also it's left some marks on it they'll disappear under the gloss coat but also you could use this for a weathering effect if you wanted to on the side of a tank or something to pick scratches from going past brushes and stuff you can see you can you can actually get this sort of scratched finish on there okay and some of you may be saying what about all the antenna and stuff that'll all, they'll all go on um what i'll do is i will do the decals and then i'll do a gloss coat to seal the decals in then I'll put the antenna on, then we'll give it a matte coat and weather it. The reason I'm not doing them now is I've got all these decals here that go around the areas where the antenna are. I'm also going to be probably rubbing down again between coats, I don't want to knock them off. And what we can do is once the gloss coat is on after the decals are on, we can put the, we can put the uh, antenna on and then using posting notes we can just mask up around the area, spray them in. You know, if there's any cleanup needed or anything, we can do that locally. And then when the mat coat goes on, it'll hide all that extra work that's been done. So there we go. I think we're ready to go. Um, I just want to get a bit more on this fin. There we go. And I don't want to go using sandpaper because, or, or sanding sticks, because even if you use like a 4000 grit, 
as soon as you come to like an edge or a corner or like a trailing edge there you will go through straight away one swipe one touch that's it you're gone through because it's quite soft this paint so there we are um i could have actually done a better job of scribing those lines in there i may be able to just improve that a touch now a scribing tool let's get a little trumpeter scribing tool out and a little straight edge there we go so if i just lay that on there now and just if you can hear something funny it's my dog with a chew that's what you can hear just gently pull that across like so the same there yeah, I shouldn't have done this, I've made a mess. There we go. So that's those now scribed in, and I've actually gone too far, so I should have just left it as it was. Yeah, I just should have left it. Never mind. Um, once the uh, decals are on and the weathering's on, everything will be fine. I've also noticed this area around the windscreen here has just sunken back where that join goes. Um, I would normally correct that but I'm not going to worry about on this one because reading up on some history of the aircraft it actually had um, some problems with cracks in the fuselage around the windscreen so the later models had stiffening panels put over anyway so those lines there would have been there in reality anyway and I've got to go over and put those little um, windscreen, windshield, windscreen wiper shrouds on there anyway so uh, we'll get that done so I'll get myself ready for the gloss coat and then I'll come back okay so for this uh, this gloss coat and I'm going to use this old product Johnson's clear and you can see this is very old and very faded I can't see a date on here 1997 it says down there so yeah it's a very old bottle it's no longer available in this form but there are other ones available if you check out various videos on YouTube there's lots to, to see all about it so um basically I'm using Johnson's clear because it's here it's readily available it's cheap and it's not too smelly so again i'm working away from the booth so i just want something that's not too smelly so i'm going to start off by painting the the sort of the smaller parts the engines and the um, undercarriage doors so i'm just going to check my flow and i've got good flow coming through there so i can just start on these here and you can afford to put it on quite wet because it will pull down some people actually use this for applying decals so as long as you don't get any runs or curtaining curtaining is where you get a build up on the edge so you don't want any runs or sagging or anything and it also if you notice it makes the paint change color it goes darker but any clear will do that so we're not after sort of giving it a gloss coat we just want to give it a sealing coat and this will be for the subsequent weathering and everything now i didn't really do the engines all i'm going to be doing on the actual fuselage is the areas where the decals are going and then we'll give the whole thing a, a gloss sealing coat afterwards and i'll probably explain again at the time but the reason you do that is if you don't seal your decals in when you come along and put washes on and stuff they will pick up on the edges of your decals so you need to be you know get a good coat of gloss over your decals particularly if they're older and thicker decals you need to be getting a good sealing coat on there to get that painted on look and get rid of the the edge of the carrier film as it were so you can see those engines have now had their their initial gloss coat so now I'm going to do the undersides of the wings because the only place we've got decals going underneath is on the undersides of the wings here so what I'm going to do is just do this outer area here in fact I may as well do the whole wing so as not to risk any differences in appearance it's not like we're spraying a gloss car body or something but not after perfection we just want a gloss coat just to seal it in and give something for the decals to go down on now that's drying almost immediately 
I'm just going to give that another wet coat. Okay, one of the things to be careful of, particularly in this scale, if you start going too mad with the wet coat, you may start losing detail. Remember, if you fill those panel lines in now, you won't be able to get a wash into them. I've got a little bit of spitting going on, but I'm not going to worry about it. Because the matte coat will hide it all. Right, so there we go. So now we can start to look at... Now I'm going to do the fin while it's upside down, because it'll be easier to do upside down. Let's get a nice wet coat on there. And then spin it around. A nice wet coat on there. Now there's nothing going on the other side of the tail plane. There's nothing else going anywhere. Um, I've got some going on these doors. that taken care of and I'm happy with that it's a bit dusty a bit flecky but hey not to worry I think I must have some dust in the airbrush or something but um not gonna worry about that for now it's a it's a military aircraft if it was a car body or a motorcycle fuel tank or something it'd be a different story okay so I can let that go off now leave that to dry and then we can come back and uh, do the top Right, here we are then. Um, this is like 48 hours later and the um, Johnson's Clear, Future, whatever you want to call it, that's gone on uh, and then I've given it a polish with some sort of, you know, 2,000, 3,000 grit um, sponges wet and it's got a nice smooth finish. Now you can see it's a bit um, sort of mottled across there. That's just where you know that the paint isn't quite perfectly smooth underneath and you don't want to go too mad with your sanding because you don't want to go through all i'm trying to do is give a flat surface that doesn't have any nibs on it at all or anything just for, to make sure we don't get any silvering on the decals now i don't record ever using rodan decals so i don't know what they're like so i'm going to start on the underside and see what it's like see what they're like i've also got a couple to add onto these doors here so i've got my little tub of warm water here and I'm going to get a cotton bud and I've also got, I've got this little foam base I've made up and I've got my micro set and micro sole in these um, some resin on there in these little bottles with this brush now I use one brush only for both um, some people say you shouldn't mix it but I, I don't worry about that um, the one thing I do avoid is using any paintbrush with this um, if you've previously been using some lacquer thinners or something on that brush or you've cleaned it out with some lacquer thinners and there's some remnants left up in the ferrule or whatever it will destroy your decals okay believe me if you want to see what i mean get an old decal put it on a piece of plastic card or an old model or something and just put a drop of um, mr color leveling things on thinners on it and you watch what happens it's incredible some back decals like bandai decals when they do the instrument panel decals in your star wars models um that works really well uh, just to drop on there and leave it don't touch it because it dissolves them and makes them settle um i found that most decal settling solutions don't work very well with bandai decals particularly where you're trying to go down into sort of details on instrument panels and stuff so what i'm going to do i'm going to start with the undersides so we've got these um stars and bars and the uh, usf there i've got a piece of paper towel here just purely so that i don't damage the paint that's all it's for um so we can see here that on this side we're going to get the stars and bars and if we look at the location it's going to go in front of that rib there um, and just over that panel line so that's okay so what I'm going to do is first of all get the decal out now it's number 13 and it's telling me these here are number 13 quick note on decals um, with these it doesn't really matter because I'm not cutting up to any edges but if you're actually cutting up to the edge of a decal that you're going to use, so say I was going to cut right up to this blue line here, you could come along with a rule and your knife and cut along there. I advise you don't. If you're cutting decals out like, like I'm going to do here, just cut it out. That's absolutely fine. 
the biggest problem with using a knife it's better to use scissors and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you this I'm not sure if you'll see it on the camera but no I can't you, you can see it there the trouble is when you use a knife it tends to cut through and lift it so you end up kind of like whoops if this is your cut you end up kind of like this yeah whereas if you use scissors you end up with something like that okay so beware if you are cutting right up to the edge of the decals you will lift the edge and it's it's not always a good thing to do so you're better off getting yourself a nice little pair of scissors like these and use them only for decals don't use them don't use them for anything else these are actually knitting <laughs> it says on there I've obviously got them from my mum or something um, but they're basically extremely sharp and because they're so small you can go around tight, tight corners and stuff with them but it's best to use scissors as a rule and the other thing is worth doing is this little number that's on here get rid of that before it goes in the water because they don't have any carrier film on them and they tend to just float around and especially with decals like this we've got a lot of clear under there you don't want it getting underneath so I'm just going to put this in the water like so we can move all that out of the way because we're not going to use it okay and I'm going to let that sit there for a few seconds that is the water is warm now I'm going to take my micro set and micro sole and I'm just going to put a drop, just one drop of microset where the where the decal's going to go. Now, sometimes when you've used clear or future, whatever you want to call it, um, the I put something under there to keep it up. Um, the area around the decal will go white; it'll go foggy. But don't worry, as it dries out, it will go back. Um, so that's that's something to not worry about be careful with some of the humbrol that's ready to go now be careful with some of your humbrol um, varnishes somebody sent me some pictures a while ago and they were really upset they destroyed their model basically because it went all white and foggy all around the decals and it didn't dry out they put more varnish or didn't go back sorry they put more varnish over the top and it just still didn't go back so I'm going to slide that off the paper there and I'm going to slide this roughly into position like that and that can sit there then on top of that and then we can use our brush to just maneuver it around and when we look at this it looks like the panel line kind of goes through the middle of it so there we go that's in position there so I can just come along now with the cotton bud and roll the cotton bud over the surface and that will take out any excess moisture just check the position before I push down too hard and then just roll the cotton bud over the top and the reason I'm doing this rather than just pushing down with a cloth is you can see what you're doing sometimes when you use a cloth you push down and what you don't know is the decals wrinkled up underneath the cloth now these look to be fairly thick ish and they're very glossy so there we go that's gone down now and now we can now that we've done that we can rub it okay and it's as I say it's sat over that panel line so we can leave that there just to go for a few seconds and then I'm going to take some more micro set and just brush it over the top like so as I say this is micro set not micro sole just leave that there to go down so then moving on now we've got number one which is USAF so that one's over here so we'll get our scissors and we'll cut this one out from the corner there Again, we're going to get rid of all this jargon 
didn't run in the water just leave it on the side for a few seconds now this one's going to go so that the this feature here is between the A and the F as we can see there and again it's going it's going parallel with these slats here uh, not parallel with the panel line that looks like it's almost ready to go so I'm going to get some We just put some down of that and it doesn't matter if it all bubbles up like that because you've got no surface tension as soon as you put the decal down on top of it it will um it will capillary under okay so i'm just going to pull the edge of the decal off like that and as i say we want the that line to be between the a and the f and we go like that and that we are down so we can just make sure as i say we're basically lining up with that with this line here, not this line here. Okay, it's tending to not want to slide and then it suddenly moves a load. All right, and then I get my cotton bud. And I'll put it down for this so that I'm not wandering around. Just lightly, I'm just I'm putting no pressure on, I'm just using the weight of the cotton bud. There we go. Just to roll out anything that's under there. And then once we know it's down, we can brush it over the top. Just make sure we've got all the bubbles out, there's no moisture under there. Like so. Okay, leave that for a few seconds and then brush some more micro set over the top. And we can see here on this one now, you see the area has gone white. That will come back. I'm not going to worry about that. It will come back. Okay, so we can leave those now to go for a little while. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and I've brushed on some of the um, microsol. And these decals are looking like they have no intention whatsoever of pulling down into those panel lines. So we'll leave those to just settle down and see what they're going to do. So on the upper wing surfaces, we've got the same again. We've got the, the stars and bars and the USAF. So... I'm going to do the same again, but this time, oops, this time I'm going to use Mr. Mark Softer Neo. Now, this one is, I think, slightly hotter than, than the, um, than the Microsoft. I've also got this one here, which I've never actually tried, to be honest, uh, but this one is, That one smells exactly the same as Microset. I think it's exactly the same thing in a different bottle, which is what Mig does with most of his products. Um, so that one there I've also got. And then we've also got the the Mr. Mark Setter Neo. So that one softens it and this one sets it. So with this one, the instructions are basically the same. So Mr. Mark Setter Neo softens and strengthens the, the decals. The adhesiveness of decals first apply a quick drop to the decal so they both tell you the same thing this one needs a good shake it's like a, a, a like a it looks like white glue so what we'll do as an experiment we'll use this one on the right and we'll use this one on the left and see what happens so i'll get these cut out get them in the water and then i'll come back and so they're on now so on the stars and bars, I used Mr. Sufter, and on the USAF, I used Mark Setter. And then what I've done is I've gone over both of them with this one after and brushed it on. And again, they look like they have no intention whatsoever of pulling down into those panel lines. Um, I'm seeing the same on this side. I've also put some of this over the top to see what happens, and it doesn't seem to have done anything. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'll experiment on the underside rather than on the top. Although it looks like it may be something starting to happen there. But basically, I mean, if these were cartograph decals, you would put them down. This, that these setting solutions would make them sort of wrinkle up and then they just pull down. But you can see these are very thick and glossy. Um, if you look back at my Hobby Boss Spitfire build, you can see I had the same issues on there. So, you know, most kit companies' decals aren't very good at all, um, if I'm honest. Um, Hobby Boss, Tamiya, not good at all. Uh, unless some of the Tamiya car kits, they say cartograph on the box, so they'll be good. But um, basically all these manufacturers' decals, they're thick, they're glossy, they won't pull down. I think Trumpeter's decals are okay. Well, the, at least the newer kits are. I'm just trying this stuff. I'm just going to brush this over the top and see what happens. This is the MIG ammo MIG stuff. Number one. Yeah, see, they're telling you to use their number two. So it's basically just Microsoft, Microsoft, I expect. But we'll see what happens. I don't think anything's going to happen with these at all. It looks like this one has a sort of slight looks like it has an inclination it may well pull down but we shall see so I'm gonna go on and get the rest of these decals on this thing you don't need to watch that and then I'll come back when they're all done right so here we go um, I've got all the tail the tail decals on and the wing decals are obviously on I've put a couple on the nose here um, as we can see if I can get it in the light we can see that these decals are not pulling down into any power lines at all. No matter how hard I try, I even put these on with hot water, uh, nothing. So, this is basically what we're going to do. I'm going to come along with some microset. We're going to brush it on, like so. And then we're going to try and get underneath the edge. Just keep brushing it. There we go, we can lift that one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take them off. Get some water on here. Some more microset. And basically, they're going to go in the bin. Because they are awful. Um, I have gone on to... The model hobbies website if you go onto ebay you will see decals for this model for model hobbies go to the models hobbies hebs go to the model hobbies website and they're actually cheaper so but i've also bought um i've i've <clears throat> recently bought a russian cargo plane from amazon and there's a nice photo set for that on there so i bought that and I also bought a set of decals for the for the C5B because um, because basically if this is what Roden decals are like, then uh, I won't be using them again. They're they're as bad as Hobby Boss or the old Hobby Boss. So and the other, the other thing you can do, of course, is come along with some sellotape. This should work. Just put the sellotape, let's try that, put the sellotape over the decal, rub it well, and it just pulls it off, just like so. Do the same over here. So that's them all gone now. And then once this all dries out, then there'll be no remnants at all of the... Um, so we'll put the micro set away and we'll just use the sellotape. And so I'll put the sellotape over here now, rub it, and off they come. And then do the same here. And off they come. Same on the nose. Goodbye. 
and we'll get the uh, caracal decals on here as soon as they arrive. Um, that's actually pulled some paint off there unfortunately. So that's going to be a little touch up. There we go. Something cracked then which I'm not happy about. What was that? So yeah, this um this kit has, has fought me all the way and even in the closing stages it's still putting up a, a damn good fight. But it's not going to beat me, it is going to get finished. Absolutely 100% guarantee this model will be finished, weathered, everything. So there we go, we're back to square one. I'll do a little touch up job with some grey paint here. and. Um, I don't know why that pulled that paint off there. There must have been a spot of grease or something on the model underneath and it's easily pulled the paint off. Yeah, that's what's happened. There's some grease on there or something. So I'll rub this back now, get that painted and then um, as soon as the decals arrive I'll be back with more. Right then guys, here we go. Um, hot off the press. Now the decals have been removed as you know. I've polished the areas where they were repainted all the front end that took quite a lot of matching because of the pre-shading and everything but that's all done now um, once it's all matte coated I'm going to give it a good weathering anyway put some streaks in it and stuff so um we're now back to square one back to where we started this video pretty much so we know the rodent decals are not good so I've bought these these are the Caracal models decal set CD144002 got these from model hobbies I think they were about 12 pounds but here we can see they're printed by cartograph um, in the set we've basically got two sheets here so we've got a set of walkways and insignia and then we've got some other greeblies here now um, we're going to end up with a lot of spares which is a good thing and hopefully there'll be enough left for me to do another one so we can sort of share the cost because you know the cost of the decals is about half the price of the model so anyway um, let's press on as we did before and we'll start with the underside and I know that you are going to see a difference like an unbelievable difference uh, than from, from what we had before with the road and decals so once again, I won't start talking about the basics about decals and everything. I've got some warm water here. I've got a cotton bud ready. So I'm going to cut out my insignia. So it's telling me on here, the basic, I've done a review of this, which will be up later. Uh, but it's basically telling me that I need to do these insignia top and bottom the same as I did before. So we've got N4 here. So I'm going to cut down, make sure I don't actually, in fact, what I'm going to do is cut down here and remove remove these walkway stripes so as not to get any damage on anything at all so as not to damage them okay so I'll get those out of the way so now I can just cut in from the sides and get what I want so I want N4 okay and I also want one of those large USAF badges there so we've got them so we can go around to here and as you can see they're all fairly close because they're uh, there's a lot on here you've got to be careful not to cut into whoops I dropped that one on the floor so I'll just get this one off like so and I'm going to remove that N4 from the corner because I don't want that floating around and I'm just going to dip that in the water for a few seconds and then take it out and place it on the bench. Okay, so we can see here that on the stars and bars, just to not get any gloss in, we can see that the actual, the, the bar part of the stars and bars is parallel to the wing walkway line, not that panel line. So we're going to get that on and I'm actually going to put it a little bit further forward than they've got it so it doesn't impinge on that walkway line. So I'm going to get my tweezers get this ready and that's ready to go so I can get some micro set just put that on and if you can hear a funny noise in the background it's not me 
with windy pops it's actually my chair that's squeaking there you go you can hear it and we can see on here that basically we're just to the left of the the panel line there so I'm just going to put it in position get rid of the paper and then I should be able to just move it around I'm going to use the tweezers should be able to just move it around like so and get it so that it's parallel with that with that line there rather than this line here okay and it is on the underside it's um, it's not really mega important okay so that's down there and I'm just going to roll out that's a dirty cotton bud I got there just going to roll it out here like this get rid of the water and then we can rub it like so make sure we've got no bubbles there we go and straight away I don't know if you can see that but almost immediately that decal is starting to go into that panel line okay so that is the difference and this is what I was saying about using good decals compared to bad ones and why it's worth looking for the cartograph. So we've done that now. We can put another drop of microset on the top. We'll leave that just to go for a few minutes. And then I'm going to do the USAF on the other side. So I'm going to put some microset in this area here. Then come along. Now this goes with that line in between the U and the S. Just slide that into place. Again, don't press it down until you've got it in position. And then we can get in the position we want, like so. Get our cotton bud. First of all, gently rolling it over the top. I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm just rolling it over the top to squeeze the water out from underneath. Okay, now we can see that it's parallel to that line there, not this one here. We've got the line there going between the U and the S. Now that's down, we can give it a rub. Push out any bubbles or anything that's under there. And if you hold it in the light, it makes it a lot easier to see how it's going down. And again, we can see that already it's starting to pull down. So I'm going to put some more microset on the top. As instructed on the bottle, a lot of people don't do this. Okay, because if you look at the bottle, it actually tells you... Um, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Carefully brush one micro set on the top of the decal. Wait a few minutes for the decal to soften, then press the decal down with a piece of boys paper towel. Repeat as necessary. Use Microsol for more decal um, more decal softening strength. So that's going down now. Okay, so I can just moisten my cotton bud. Roll it over the top. That's the same as pressing it down with a cotton the soft cloth okay we can see that it's going down beautifully do the same on this one okay and I'm, I'm not actually sure if these decals are responding well to the second application of microset because I don't know if you noticed there but this one started to curl up which is what you actually want to happen Right, so pushing that down there. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is dry the brush off, get some microsol, just brush that on the top, and this will really make it pull down, and it will probably wrinkle up. Same here, just brush them on.
And there we go. And we'll just leave that now to do its thing. Okay, if you're new to the hobby and you're using this uh, deck or select solution for the first time, you might note status, you might be able to see this here. You see how the decals starting to wrinkle up? If you look at the middle of the star, you can see it all wrinkling up. Don't worry about it, don't touch it, just leave it. Let it carry on and do its thing. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, we'll see a little bit on here as well. Uh, you can see a little bit there between the S and the A. Um, but you can also notice how well it's pulling down into that panel line, which is exactly what the others didn't do. You can see there. Okay, so that's the difference in your cartograph decals and your normal. So I'm going to go on and put these other ones on now. So we'll go in here. Cut these out. And as I say, you can use a knife. But you do run the risk, if you should cut into any carrier film anywhere, you run the risk of having a raised edge, which will look awful. Again, I'm going to remove this N4 from the corner. Like that, cut these apart. And then in the water, in the water, job done. Okay, and then same as before, drop of micro set on the wing, where the decal's going to go. It's not ready to go yet, it's not sliding. So give that another few seconds. Okay, so we've got the uh, the micro set is on there. The decal's sliding on the paper now. So as the other side, I can slide this on. Just drop it on there, and then I can position it where I want it. Like so. Get it parallel with that panel line. And then again, cotton bud, squeeze out the moisture. And this time I won't put any more micro set on top because as I said last time it made it wrinkle up. So that's gone down. You can see already it's gone into that panel line. It's, um, it's quite incredible. So, you know now it's not me. The two main the, the two main models I've done where I've used tackles is on this and the um, Hobby Boss Spitfire, and on both of them I had a nightmare. And it just proves that a bad workman should never blame his tools, but uh, a half decent modeler can't cope with crap decals. So there we go. So I'm going to put some micro sole on top of that. Now let that go to work. like so, make sure it's all covered and then we can move on to the stars and bars over here, a bit too much there but never mind and then again this one goes just to the left side of that line between the uh, aileron and the flaps And again, getting it parallel with that panel line behind, not the one in front. There we go.
there you have it and then I'm just going to put some micro sole on the top and let that dry on there okay so there you go now you've seen me doing that I can now move along and basically get the rest done and then I'll come back right moving forward here I said I was going to um, get all this done and then come back but there's a note here for best results we recommend 48 49 55 and 57 to anchor the endpoints of the walkways which is a really good idea so um, basically that's this one this one and these two ends put those in first and that gives you a starting and end point for the for the actual walkways so I'm going to do that now I've got this one here done ready to go so that is some um, 48 so I'm going to put some micro set down here I want to use plenty because I want to be able to move it around a lot after it's in uh, after it's in place okay and we also want to make sure there's plenty down here so we don't get any silvering in those corners we shouldn't get silvering anyway cartograph decals are very forgiving so I'm just gonna in fact I'll go the other way I think if I slide it off that way then I'll have these two legs hanging off the sides if I go that way then um, then it won't be hanging off any paper at all so basically that line there is going to sit in front of that that panel line there so we'll basically get there we'll get about in the middle just slide it on like so now the ends of this I'm assuming have to line up with those panel lines so I'm going to go to the outside of the panel lines like so and then that has to be in the center so I'm figuring looking at these two lines here which go down I want to get it equidistant from those lines I think that's about it if I get a fresh cotton bud just wet it just start to dab this down I'm not going to roll it down properly because I want to make sure that when it's down it's actually in the right position so what I'm looking at is the gap on the end there compared to the gap there and I want them about the same and I want this to be down the down the center which it's not which means I need to come so now I'm gonna get some water on the brush and just attempt to lift the corner of the decal so that it can be moved there we go Yeah, so basically I think I need to go over that way with it again you can see where this um, micro set goes it makes the uh, future or the clear whatever you want to call it go white but as I said before don't worry that will disappear so we've got I'm gonna make sure these angles here are just in front of that panel line I want to make sure this here is down the center that's the main thing so that's that one in place looks pretty central to me we got a panel line under there so I'm going to put some micro sole on it to make it pull down 
just want to get these wrinkles out first. The other thing is after we've done this we can actually um, get some thinners on there and remove the deco film if we want to chance it. The other thing we can do is sand them. There we go, now that will pull that into that panel line nicely now. So we just leave that one to do its thing. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So there you go, now you've seen that. So I'll come back when I'm all done. Right, I'm probably going to regret this. But I'm going to try and show you how I get this straight line. Okay, now here's the decal. Okay, you need to trim about 10 millimeters off the end because it's a little bit too long. Easier to trim it before you start than after you've finished. So I'm going to attempt to show you how I get this a straight line. I'm not going to use any microset. I'm just going to put some water on the wing because I want it to be easily floatable, if you like. And I want to try and keep it in a straight line in front of the panel line. So I'm just going to pull the end off here. If it's ready to go. Yes, it is. Probably easier to pull that end off, actually. My fingers are sticky from the uh, from the previous decals, and you'll be really careful when your fingers get sticky from the adhesive. You need to be really careful because as soon as you touch anything, you'll lift it. Okay, so I'm going to get this. Now I know I'm going to go too far over that way. And I'm going to try and slide it off. It needs more water, I think. Okay, so I'm going to go too far that way. It took me so long to do the other one. I think it's probably dried out. As I say, I may well regret this. In fact, I may even edit it out. But basically, like I say, too far that way and then slide, get it roughly in the right place, Nigel, come on. Look, see, that's the problem with having sticky fingers. The deco will stick to your fingers straight away. So I'm just going to pull that back over, like so. Okay, I'm going to wet my fingers, clean them off. Can't afford to have sticky fingers with this. Right, so I'm now going to get this in the right position. Use the brush, plenty of water, and that way the deco will just sort of flop into its position it wants to be in. It it would rather lay flat than uh, than lay in a curve. Okay, so. There we go. So it's in roughly the right position of that in there. And we've got plenty of water on this end. So now I can put my finger on it and pull it this way. And hopefully it will kind of stay straight. Now it hasn't. So again, plenty of water. Whoops, a daisy. This is going wrong. I need to be really careful here. In a way, I'm glad this is happening because it's showing you what you mustn't do. Right, see, I picked that up with the brush then and it turned over. So what I'm going to do now is just pull it down this way, pull that over. And then I'm going to pull it. It's not playing ball at all. I want it to float on the surface. For some reason this water is drying out really fast. It's not warm. It's only about 18, 19 degrees in here. Okay, and then get it in roughly the right position. And as you can see, what I'm doing is just pulling it to try and make it stay straight. And there you go. Pull that end round. 
okay so what you can see is I'm just going to push that up there slightly if you look along the wing it's the best way to see if it's straight or not it has sat on a lot of water so it's not helping so I'm just going to brush that water out and brush some more out that way so we can pull that over pull this end over And there we go and I can look down the wing like that and I can see if it's straight and I only can see that it's just go up a touch there and then I can get my cotton bud no it's not playing ball at all Not for the faint-hearted this, <laughs> probably easier actually to paint them as I said uh, at the beginning of the video. Okay now I've managed to pull it out straight now so I'm going to wet the cotton bud to stop it sticking and just pull it back. Then pull it back this way. then pull it back that way pull it back this way if you just keep pulling it it will come straight in the end there we go that's pretty straight to my eye I'm just rolling it down now with a wet cotton bud and that wasn't supposed to happen move it over just by rubbing it manipulating it pushing it over like so there we go once it's in place can roll it down firmly And then just leave it to dry. But as I say, that's the thing with it. It's it's all about pulling it forwards and backwards, and that's the only way you're going to really get it straight. Okay, so I can look down there now, and as you can see, it's pretty straight. It has got a very slight turn to the in the middle, but hey. And then what I'm going to do is just brush on some microsol just to soften it and make it pull down like so. And you can see we've got both sides done there. We can just leave those now to do their own thing and pull themselves down while we get on with the, the back ones.